annual Oliver and Adelaide Tambo wreath laying ceremony in Watville in Benoni. Let's cross there now live. Deputy ministers who are here, the Premier of our province, Dr. David Makura, the Executive Mayor of our Metro Ekuruleni, Councillor Mzwandi Lemasina, Isitwalo Andwe, Mama Usofi Dibrain, the leadership of the African National Congress at national, provincial, regional, and at local level, the leadership of the Alliance partners, the SACP, Kosatu, and Sanko, and the leadership of the leagues of our movement, the ANC Women's League, the ANC Youth League, our Veterans League, and of course MKMVA, fraternal parties from our region here, ZANU and MPLA, our honored guest and our dearest sister, Congresswoman Maxine Walters and her husband, Council General of the United States, religious leaders amongst us and traditional leaders and comrades and friends and fellow South Africans had our beloved leader O Artambo been with us today, he would have been turning 102 years old. We continue to celebrate his birthday, although he's no longer with us, in honor of the unparalleled contribution he made in the struggle to liberate the oppressed people of our country. We continue to celebrate his life in acknowledgement of the fact that it is he who guided our society towards the constitution or the constitutional democratic order that we enjoy today. Oliver Reginald Kaizana Tambo was born on this day in 1917 in Cantolo, Epizana, in the then Pondoland in the Eastern Cape. He was born at a time when the settlers of European descent were firmly consolidating their grip on power in our land. Having recently formed the Union of South Africa, the English and the Africana found common cause in the exclusion of the black majority. The Natives Land Act legalized centuries of steady and systematic and violent dispossession of African people of their land and their wealth. The South Africa into which O. R. Tambo was born was characterized by the supremacy of white people politically, economically, and socially. This supremacy was anchored on conditions of poverty and underdevelopment for the black majority in general and Africans in particular. It is important to know the context in which O. R. Tambo grew up if we are to understand what shaped his political thinking and the actions that he took throughout his life. Had he lived, O. R. Tambo would have taken great satisfaction in the knowledge that his ANC at its 54th National Conference, which took place in the year of his centenary and which was dedicated to his memory, firmly put this country on the path of fundamental 
radical socio-economic transformation which aims to resolve once and for all the historical injustice meted out against the black majority in our country. Although he had not received any formal education himself, his father, Mzimeni, impressed on the young Tambu the need to be educated as the best and perhaps only way to decisively break from the shackles of poverty and underdevelopment into which he was born. The young O.R. took his father's counsel seriously and vowed to strive in the classroom to better himself and the conditions of his parents. Ever hardworking and focused, O.R. Tambo was able to strike a balance between the demands of his schoolwork and the homestead duties expected of every normal village boy, including plowing the field and heading livestock. He performed all the tasks given to him with diligence and excelled at school at the same time. Young people must draw inspiration from the life of young O.R. Tambo and use to the fullest all the educational opportunities provided to them by the democratic government. Academic excellence should be the goal driving the activities of every young person of school-going age in our country today, just as the goal driving government is to ensure all young people have equal access to quality education and the opportunity to reach their full potential. On this score, I wish to encourage the metric class of 2019 who are busy with their final exams to apply themselves with even greater effort in the weeks remaining of this school year and particularly as they are now writing their metric exams. Having been a teacher himself, O. R. Tambo would have wanted us to acknowledge and appreciate all the hard-working teachers who spare neither effort nor strength in ensuring that our matriculants are prepared for their exams. To those teachers, we say thank you. And we also say, well done. Please continue your great service to our country because this is the moment when you as teachers are now on the radar screen of our country as we expect great results from the young people that we have been preparing to pass their metric exams. Compatriots, one of the things that must be said about O.R. Tambo is that he was a devout Christian. He accepted Christianity at a tender age at the Holy Cross Missionary School and became a dedicated member of the Anglican Church where he served as an altar boy. I'm reflecting on this aspect of his life because his strong Christian beliefs helped to spare him from many misdemeanors usually associated with young men, then and even now. There is an important lesson to draw here, that young people must seek a set of beliefs and perspectives on morality to successfully deal with, among other things, the scourge of alcohol, substance abuse, risky sexual behaviors, and violence. Faith-based communities have an important role to play as part of our broader moral regeneration efforts. Today, you could say, I am giving you a presidential task. You now have a task 
to ensure that we broaden the moral regeneration efforts of our nation. The story of O.R. Tambo is like a book full of timeless lessons to all who wish to become better people in the service of humanity. From an early age, O.R. Tambo never sought high office. However, his lack of appetite for leadership positions should not be confused with a lack of confidence to lead. O.R. Tambo persuaded his peers with ease and with great sophistication. Once he was sent out of South Africa to go and make sure that the ANC survives as he was leading the external mission of the ANC, he was able to brush shoulders with various leaders around the world and persuaded the whole world to take a clear position against the apartheid regime. As a very patient listener and a good debater, he always provided leadership in critical moments within and through a collective. O.R. Tambo went to further his studies at the University of Fort Hare, which in times of despair in our country carried in its hands the hopes, the dreams, and aspirations of young black men and women. It was at Fort Hare University, the alma mater of many distinguished leaders and liberation struggles stalwarts, such as President Nelson Mandela, President Yusuf Lule of Uganda, President Sesereza Khama of Botswana, the Prime Minister of Lesotho Nzumu Khetle, President Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe, and many others. It was at Fort Hare where I believe O.R. found his identity. And this was so clearly articulated by President Robert Mugabe, who was commenting on the time he spent at the University of Fort Hare when he said, I personally regard Fort Hare University as the cradle of African anti-colonial ideology and the seminal source of African intellectualism. Here he continues, I was academically born, here I was transformed, and here I discovered my African identity and personality, close quotes. I believe that this university had the same impact on our leader, O.R. Tambo. Yes, Executive Mayor Masina, I've heard of your dreams, your aspirations about having an O.R. Tambo University of Science and Technology here in Ekurulene. You have committed yourself to lobbying me and uh, the National Executive and the Cabinet the Premier sitting next to you there was also whispering to me, saying this is the only metro in the country that does not have its own university. Well, if you talk nicely to me, <laughs> Mayor Masina, not via Twitter. <laughs> We could get to that point. I do believe indeed that <laughs> I do believe that indeed every metro in our country should have its own university. That I do believe firmly. And so you've already given this university that does not exist a name. 
you are deeply moved by this man whose life we are celebrating today. His spirit is propelling you to dream and have all these aspirations. I join you in those dreams. O Archambo, with a sharpened sense of justice from his lived experience, he was immersed in student struggles, seeking always to defend and advance the interests of students. Despite his activism and involvement in student politics, O Artambo continued to excel academically. And this is another important lesson for our present day student leaders. While we appreciate the role they play in defending and advancing the interests of students and in creating a conscious citizenry, Tambo would have expected of them to see to it that their revolutionary duty to excel academically and to graduate on time and create space for others is something that they should cherish. On this score, let me congratulate all those who are involved in student politics, who are leading by example and obtaining their qualifications. Having heard of the first, for the first time about the ANC, while he was still a student at St. Peter's Secondary School in Johannesburg, it was only when he returned to the same school as a teacher that O.R. Tambo came to, be, to fully appreciate the necessity of a strong and effective movement in the fight against the oppression and exploitation that the majority of our people were subjected to. Together with other young intellectuals such as Dr. Mkolisi Majombozi, Congress Mbata, A.P. Mda, Walter Sisulu, Dr. William F. Ngomo, Anton Lembede, Nelson Mandela and others, they proceeded to found the ANC Youth League in 1944. Their goal was to infuse new and militant ideas into the ANC to propel it onto a qualitatively different plane of struggle. This was a very special generation of young people and Oliver Tambo was elected as the first National Secretary of the League alongside Anton Lembede who was elected the President. True to his character, Oliver Reginald Tambo executed the task of his office with diligence and worked tirelessly to establish a youth league presence in all the then four provinces. Radical yet polite, militant yet respectful, OR's dynamism immensely benefited the youth league when negotiating its way with a rather <coughs> conservative old leadership guard of the African National Congress. Owing to his leadership capabilities, O.R. rose through the ranks of the ANC, acting as Secretary General when Walter Sisulu was under burning orders and ultimately becoming Deputy President to Chief Albert Luktuli. It was not surprising, therefore, that after the tragic death of Chief Albert Luktuli in 1967, and with most of his contemporaries imprisoned on Robben Island, there was no more qualified, no one more qualified and fit for the position of president of the African National Congress than him. At this time, he was already in exile, having been sent by his movement in 1960 to establish, as I said, the external mission of the ANC and to galvanize international support for our struggle against a murderous minority regime. The ANC sent him out of the country at a time when he had just gotten married to Mama Adelaide Tambo. 
and was enjoying a successful career at Mandela and Tambo Attorneys. We pay tribute to Mama Adelaide Tambo, who as a revolutionary in her own right, understood and was prepared to pay the personal cost at which national freedom would be achieved. We salute her as one of the many heroines of our struggle who carried not only the burden of our liberation, but the care of their own family. And we must, in this regard, thank the Tambo children for having borne the greatest burden that any child can bear, where they are separated from their parents and where they have to grow up in a household without a father. And today we pay tribute to the children for having become the wonderful responsible adults that they are. Dali, we pay tribute to you and to your other siblings as well. We remember Mama Adelaide's steely determination in the face of hardship and risk to contribute everything within her being to the liberation of South Africa. When the instruction came, both O.R. and Adelaide Tambo accepted the absolute necessity of leaving their homes and undertaking a mission into territory unknown and for a period that was also uncertain. They accepted the will of their movement, believing always that they were acting in the best interests of the oppressed majority in our country. This is the type of self-sacrifice that defined the characters of both Oliver and Adelaide Tambo. It is this selflessness that made them the embodiment of what the ANC's strategy and tactics document envisages of all cadres of the movement when it says, Whenever, wherever they are to be found, ANC cadres should act as the custodians of the principles of fundamental social change, winning respect among their peers and society at large through exemplary conduct. They must be informed by values of honesty, hard work, humility, service to the people and respect for the laws of the land. President O.R. Tambo was, for the better part of his adult life, the chief custodian of the principles of fundamental social change. He won the respect of his peers and the world at large through exemplary conduct. He was the repository of the best values and the principles upon which our democratic society was founded and sustained. He truly understood and represented the deep aspirations of the masses of our people. He reached out to the peoples of the world, forging one of the most powerful global movements to confront and to end the the perpetration of a crime against humanity. He sought international solidarity, not only for the struggling masses of South Africa, but for all colonized, oppressed, and exploited people across the world. It is therefore a matter of great joy that we are joined today by Congresswoman Maxine Waters, an unwavering champion of the cause of the South African people and the cause of global justice. My sister Maxine, we can never thank you enough for the stance that you took in the struggle against apartheid and the sacrifices that you and many others in the United States and indeed in the world made to get us to where we are. We owe our freedom also to your work. And we thank you very much. 
It was also, let me comment, it was also a joy listening to you on television last night. I was just too tired to come, having been in the free state all day. But listening to you was very refreshing. You were able, during your lecture, the O.R. Tambo lecture, to touch on a number of issues, including issues that we are having to deal with. And I was particularly pleased when you also commented about the recent challenge that we had on <clears throat> the attacks that were perpetrated against a number of people from other countries. And you urged us to remember what O.R. Tambo's values and moral standing on how we should treat others from other countries. And you reminded us that Oliver Tambo was a pan-Africanist, and thank you very much for reminding us that. We are gathered here today in a free and democratic South Africa, thanks to the extraordinary leadership of O.R. Tambo. We need to work together to ensure that O.R. Tambo continues to live through our conduct and through our service to the people of South Africa. As we navigate our way in terms of implementing the decisions that have been taken by our various conferences, as we insist that indeed we should ensure that the people of our country do get a better life through the transformative interventions and initiatives that we will embark upon, we will forever remember O.R. Tambo's message in relation, yes, to changing the economy of our country, putting it on a much better footing. We will, yes, continue to remember the way that he wanted all South Africans to benefit from the wealth of our country. But we will also continue to remember the work that he did as the President of the African National Congress because he was amongst the first leaders in our movement who promoted the empowerment of women within the African National Congress. It was O.R. Tambo who was the lead person when it came to the empowerment of women. And today, we now have a completely mixed leadership core in the African National Congress, where you might not know this, my sister Maxine, that in every structure of our movement, we have to have a balance where we have 50% men and 50% women. And that was initiated by O.R. Tambo. O.R. Tambo would have been appalled by the spate of gender-based violence that continues to rage in our country. And he would have stood firm in insisting to men in our country that we've got to treat the women in our country with respect, with honor, and with dignity. O.R. Tambo would have taken a very strong stance against men who kill women, who rape the women of our country. And in this regard, as we continue to strengthen our resolve in dealing with the scourge of gender-based violence, we will forever remember the message of O.R. Tambo in this regard. O.R. Tambo continues to inspire us in everything that we do. We do not only create memorial lectures on renaming of buildings, airports, to remember him. We remember him for what he stood for. We remember O. Artambo for his humility. We remember him for the values that he subscribed to. We remember him for upholding the highest of values and ensuring that the integrity of the African National Congress is always held up high. Those of us who have remained must, on a daily basis, seek to walk in O.R. Tambo's footsteps. Every day, 
we should seek to be like O Artambo. Every day we should seek to act like O Artambo. And every day we should serve the people of our country like O Artambo served his people. Selflessly, without seeking to gain anything for himself. If there is a leader that we can uphold as being a true role model, as being a leader who stands out amongst many, it, was o R it is O R Tambo, who in his service to the people of our country never saw himself gaining anything. But all he ever sought to do was to ensure that the people of South Africa gain everything that will make their lives a lot better than they are. So OR, as we continue the work of transforming our country, repositioning our economy, dealing with all the challenges that we have to deal with, we will forever be inspired by your leadership, by the way that you conducted yourself. We will always remember you and thank you very much for having been the leader that you are and for having led our people and our movement. I thank you. Chief Whip of Council, Obote Eze, as a senzela e vote of thanks. I also want to remember uh, what Umamu Adelaide Francis Tambo said when she was given a, 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 a confinement of the city of Ekuruleni. Uh, addressed by Honorary Representative of the Freedom of the City recipients, Dr. Adelaide Francis Tambo. She says, I quote, when my husband and I left the East Rand in 1960, she was addressing council in, on the 28th October 2004. She says, there was no Ekuruleni, no Dumangosi, none of our wonderful councillors. We left an area of segregation politically, mentally, and emotionally. How far have we, have we come? She says, I want to congratulate the district of Ekurulene and its decision makers. I want to applaud you for manifesting the solidarity of our struggle for freedom, a struggle and a freedom that these keys represent. My husband and the ANC never fought people we fought political ideologies that robbed all the citizens of South Africa of their right to dignity and equality under the law. She says, I remember being assaulted by police in this area, and now I feel that our police are unrivaled. They are professional, caring, efficient, true servants of the community. I remember under the apartheid laws that even as a mother and wife, I was legally a minor. So I suppose in a way, my key to the city represents not only my physical return to the, to the district, but also my coming of age. It is humbling yet, yet and yet inspiring for me to see the great strides you young people have made. It fills me with peace and the certainty that when old, Sorry, that when old fighters are gone, our nation will be in safe hands. 
but be wary. Power always comes with price. That's what she said. The key that opens doors can also lock them shut. I would, as your mother, implore you to always keep the doors open, your ears listening, your eyes watching. You have honored the memory of my husband today by giving him the key to Eguruleni. In doing so, you are not only paying tribute to him, but to all other citizens of this region who are no longer with us, but who played a, pi a pivotal role in our liberation. In honoring me, you are showing an acknowledgement for the role of our women have played and continue to play in our fight to ensure that freedoms we fought for will not be lost. To our youth, I, I would say, aspire for the keys God has placed in your lives. Never allow your present circumstances to rob you of the future you deserve. Fight for a brighter life, a successful future. That is your battle. We of the older generation have given you the key to your future, but we cannot walk through that door for you. You must ensure that the sacrifices made on your behalf are honored because your legacy is to fight for the future of those who will follow you. As we pay tribute to Udad Oad, we must also pay tribute to this wonderful woman who fought side by side with Umama. With those few words, let me call upon our Chief Week of Council, Councillor Jimmy Bidwe Lavati, to actually thank on behalf of our city. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. On behalf of the city of Ekuruleni, we want to thank you, Comrade President, for your presence and for your profound address. Your honoring of this event affirms that President Tambo was indeed a leader of note, worthy to be celebrated by the highest office. Ikenzilengovu, Honorable President. Realewua, Comrade Premier Makura, for always being with us as a city, for your guidance and support, which always cuts across <coughs> beyond this gathering today. We also express our sincere gratitude to the Tsikudu and the Tambo family, as led by Uput Dali and the wife. You are always side by side with us. This event cannot be complete without your presence as a family. We also extend thanks to the OR and the Adelaide Tambo Foundation for their consistent presence in this gathering. To our Honorable Mayor, you took the baiting and you never failed to implement the council resolution of honoring Comrade OR Tambo and always striving to give a befitting commemoration to President OR Tambo. Siabulela Gakulu, Kumfundisi, Utemba Seya, Ugusi Pailis, Nogwenze Lagbaum Sebin Zgata to Tambo, Ube, Gosigele Gilei, Enko Sigakulum Fundis. Madam Speaker, Sibambangazos was being a You have always ensured that this event is directed in a dignified manner, something that is worthy to do, knowing that Comrade President Tambo was an outstanding organizer. To all our distinguished guests, representatives of Progressive Liberation Movement, ZANU and MPLA, Congresswoman Walters, our senior citizens and veterans, in particular Umam Sophie Debrain, we really appreciate your presence. Thanks to all public representatives who are present today, especially our councillors from the city of Eguruleni, as well as the representatives of our sister municipality, the OR Tambo, as represented by its deputy mayor. We really thank all officials of the city of Ekuruleni, as led by the city manager, who work tirelessly behind the scene to coordinate yet another successful commemoration, including our choir. We thank you very much. Most importantly, Madam Speaker, we thank the community, the entire membership and the leadership of the African National Congress 
its leagues and alliance partners from national, province, and of course in the region. As a Kokelwa Goyo, go regional secretary way to Ukomri to Tembingo Singers. In bidding farewell to his longtime friend, Comrade Oar Tambo, President Nelson Mandela said, amongst others, the following, and I quote, President, as you instructed us, we will bring peace to our tormented land. As you directed us, we will bring freedom to the oppressed and liberation to the oppressor. As you strive, we will restore the dignity of the dehumanized. As you commanded, we will defend the option of a peaceful resolution of our problems. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Chief. Thank you very much. Babu President, thank you for listening to our dear mayor and the promise you have kept. Thank you so much. Ufada has one request to mayor. Now that the president listened to you, mayor, may you li listen to Ufada. The request is, the past few weeks, I've buried more than about four people, young people, here in Whiteville due to car hijacking. Seattle, Australia Police Station, Mayor, Upper Ewardville. That's my request. Thank you. Let us pray. Let us pray. May the Lord of peace make you perfect and holy. May you all be kept safe and blameless, spirit, soul, and body, for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has called you all. And he will never fail you, our dear leadership. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, bear with you and remain with this place now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome back. We're coming out of uh, that uh, uh, remembrance of Oliver Reginald Tambo, his birthday today, the 27th of October, as you have seen uh, that uh, talk yesterday by uh, U.S. Congresswoman Maxine Waters, also a very beautiful one. Another talk that has been given in this regard was the, by the ANC Treasurer General Paul Mashatile. All these multiple activities taking place around the country to celebrate posthumously, of course, the birthday of uh, uh, former ANC President Oliver Reginald Tambo. With that, we welcome you to the Saturday edition, rather Sunday edition of the Agenda. My name is Desiree Chauke. Once again, we're with Zai Khan uh, to give us the latest on the sporting front. Zai, very good morning.